Hey guys, it's BSRC here once again with RC Nightmare. In this tutorial we're going to show you how to completely rebuild your Nitro RC engine. We're going to break it up into five different parts, each part showing you a different step of the process. This should help to give you a little bit more in-depth view at how it's done and allow you to follow along as you do it at home. For the, build, for the video I'm going to be using a Traxxas 2.5 engine. The process will be exactly the same for a Traxxas 2.5R or a 3.3 and very similar for most Nitro RC engines on the market. So let's get started. The first step is to remove the carburetor assembly. On this model, there's just one nut that we're going to want to loosen up. Don't have to remove it all the way. And that will let go of the carburetor, wiggle it a little bit, and it'll pull right out. Set that aside. Next step is going to remove the cooling head on the motor. The head is held on by five bolts on top. You can see them right there. It's very important as you take these out to loosen them in a star pattern, crisscross. You don't want to go in a circle, otherwise you're going to put too much stress on one side of the motor. So we loosen one, back that out all the way, and cross over to the other side. And do that each time. Crossing over. We're almost drawing a star pattern, that's kind of why they call it that. Crossing over. And the last one. Okay, now the head's simply just going to pull off. Going to get all our hardware out of there so we don't lose it. Now between the head and the block, you're going to have a head shim. That's a small gasket, this guy right here. Real thin, real easy to damage. You want to make sure that you take note of the gasket. Check to see if it's damaged, bent, squished, burnt. Anything like that is a cause for replacement. Without this little guy in there, your nitro motor will not run well, if at all. So we'll set that aside. Cooling heads off. Next step is to remove the back plate of the motor. This is the back plate here. It's got four bolts that hold it on. Same process here, guys. Make sure you crisscross as much as you can. So I remove one. I'm going to cross over to the other side. Cross over. Last one. Okay, now the back plate will simply pull off the back of the motor just like that. Now this back plate has the starter shaft on it. That's this guy here. It just pushes out. There's your starter shaft. Set that aside. And on this model, there's a small Teflon washer in here too. I'm taking it off now so I don't accidentally lose it later. All right, now that we have those off, all that's left is the block and the rotating assembly inside the engine block. You can see the connecting rod going up and down. I'm spinning the crankshaft right now. That moves the piston up and down inside the motor. Now the piston rides inside of the sleeve. That's this copper brass looking piece here. That sleeve goes all the way down to here inside the motor. And we're going to push it out through the back hole from the back plate out the top of the motor. Now, you don't want to use metal tools here, guys, although you might damage the inside of your motor. So I like to use the soft handle of a needle nose, anything you got lying around. Some guys use toothbrushes. Simply take the handle, stick it up inside there, and give it a little push. Not too hard. It should come up fairly easily. And there you can see it popped out the top. I got it started. So I'm going to simply pull it the rest of the way out. That's your sleeve. Again, this is very crucial to the motor running well. So if your motor is running well before, make sure you take care not to damage this. If you're replacing it, you can throw it away. All right, now that all that's left is the connecting rod and piston, still in there, and the crankshaft. Now the connecting rod and piston are one assembly right now, so we're going to remove them together. You're going to start by putting the connecting rod at the very top of the motor. You can see I have it on the top there. Now it's on the bottom all the way to the top and all you're going to do is grab the bottom of the rod and the piston and pull them out towards the rear of the motor. So you kind of wiggle them out a little bit. They may fight you just a bit. Mine's giving me some trouble. Again, patience here. Just be real gentle with it. Eventually it will come right off. Okay, 
Now you can see I got the rod and piston out. It pulls right out the top. For now, we'll set that aside. Again, be careful not to damage any of this. Don't scratch it up. All that's left inside the motor is the crankshaft. You can see, again, I'm spinning it here. And to remove that, you just push from the front of the motor out the rear. So I'm going to get it started. Use a tool here real carefully. Push it out the back. And there she goes. So I have what's left of my block. All that's left in here are the two bearings. We'll show you how to replace those in a later video. The crankshaft here. The piston and rod assembly. Now if you need to replace the piston and rod assembly and the sleeve and your bearings, usually it's going to be cheaper just to get a new motor. Traxxas trading plan makes sure that it's cheaper if you have to replace all those parts to just get a whole new motor. If you do have to replace individual pieces, the piston and connecting rod are attached by a wrist pin. That's what this is rotating on right here. And a very tiny clip holds them in. And the clip is located right in this little hole here. Very tiny clip. You can move that with the needle nose. You just grab it, twist it, and pull it out. And then these two pieces will come apart. Usually you won't have to replace them. If you do, chances are the rest of your motor is probably bad. So make sure that you take inventory of what needs to be replaced. I'll go through the rest of that in the next video. Okay, so the main parts of our motor here. I'm going to set these all aside and we're going to focus on the carburetor next. Carburetor is what delivers the fuel and regulates it to the motor. So if this is clean, isn't clean, real dirty, or gummed up, it definitely is going to need a rebuild. Start by unscrewing the high speed needle. That's this big one here. I'm just going to back it out all the way and pull it right out. There's the needle there. Again, be careful with it. Now we can remove the needle housing. I'm just going to use a nut driver, loosen this a little bit. This comes out. Got our fuel inlet piece there. That's what the fuel line attaches to. And there are two washers that seal this so the fuel doesn't leak out. So make sure you don't lose them. There's one washer right here. I got one in my hand that goes on the other side. I'm just going to put those together for now. Okay, next step, we're going to move the throttle linkage arm here. A small set screw holds it in place. Loosen that. And it comes right off. Now we're going to move the boot for the slide barrel. So you see that when you hit the throttle on your car, it pulls the barrel out. This boot keeps it sealed. So we're just going to lift up on the inside of the boot and pull it right out. Boot's off. Now I'm going to remove the idle stop screw. That's this little guy here. Takes a very small flathead. Let me grab my flathead real quick. Okay, got a small flathead. Pull this out all the way. That little guy. All right, now we have a small spring that has to come off. You can see it here. That's what pulls the barrel back in, keeps it from coming out all the way. I just slip it off its lip. Now this barrel can come out all the way. There you go. Now the low speed needle is still in the barrel. I'm going to leave it in there for now. That's that little flathead piece there. And the needle pokes through on the other end. We can leave those together. And that's it for the carburetor. Now we have a couple cap seals here. Unless you submerged your car in water or left it, let it sit for over a year, you won't really have to remove these. I'm going to show you in the later video how to clean it up without pulling them off. That's that. So we have a full motor disassembly here for you guys. Again, kind of intimidating with a pile of parts. So it does help as you're taking it apart to kind of take note of how the pieces fit together. You can use this video as a reference as well as you're doing it. We'll show you in the next video how to clean and inspect the motor to see if you do need to replace any parts. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you comment below or visit us at RC Nightmare Forums. We'll talk to you later.